All right, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Brian Lagunas. I am a product manager for Infragistics. You can email me anytime at blagunas at infragistics.com. I blog all the time at brianlagunas.com, and you can connect with me on Twitter at Brian Lagunas. And, you know, technically you can even tweet at Brian Lagunas during this webinar, uh, and, you know, we can have a nice little communication. So what are we here to talk about today? Today we're here to uh, talk about a new product that Infragistics has just released with our 13.1 release called Net Advantage for Windows UI. I am personally really excited about this release. So let's kind of go over what we're going to talk about today. First, we're going to give a brief overview of what Net Advantage for Windows UI is. Then we're going to talk about uh, basically what a Windows Store application is, what encompasses a Windows Store app. We're going to take a look at our cool XAML controls. Uh, I'm a XAML guy, so this is where I'm going to spend most of my time. Uh, then I'm going to pause for Q&A. You know, I'll probably take two, three, maybe five minutes for questions over the XAML controls. Then we're going to hop right into the HTML controls. Then we'll pause for another Q&A, and that will be the end of the webinar. So what is Net Advantage for Windows UI? Well, Basically, it's controls for building Windows Store applications. It's a brand new product. We just released it with 13.1, and it's a very control-packed product. So before we get into the actual controls, let's take a minute to talk about, okay, what exactly is a Windows Store app? What type of app am I building with NetAdvantage for Windows UI? Well, a Windows Store app is Windows 8 specific, okay? So these apps run on Windows 8. Uh, if you run Windows 8, you've seen the start screen before. Okay, uh, some terminology you might have heard in the past might have been Metro, then it got changed to Modern UI, then it got changed to Windows style, design style, and now they just call it Windows Store app. So the apps you're going to be building with NetAdvantage for Windows UI are apps that are meant to run on the new Windows 8 start screen side of Windows 8. Okay, so you're going to upload your app into the store. People, consumers, users will be downloading your app from the store, installing it on their Windows 8 uh, device, and running it on the start screen side of Windows 8. So if you're expecting to build an app, a Windows Store app that will run on the desktop, eh, nope, you're wrong. It doesn't run here. Okay, It runs on the other side, the start screen side of Windows 8. So to get a better understanding, let's take a quick look at uh, the Windows 8 architecture. So we, you have how you currently write apps now, right? Your desktop apps for 32-bit and your 64-bit uh, Intel devices. This is where the .NET stack is, Win32, right? Your C Sharp, C++, all that great stuff. Well, Windows Store apps have a whole new uh, runtime APIs of their own. Okay, so this is what's referred to WinRT, the Windows Runtime APIs, WinRT. This contains your application model and uh, basically your devices and printings, graphic media, everything that is required to make a Windows app run exists within WinRT. Now, this is not to be confused with Windows RT, which is an operating system. Okay, you have Microsoft Windows RT, and you also have the Surface RT. All right, this gets all confusing, I know. Whenever you hear the term WinRT, think Windows Runtime, Developing Windows Store Applications. Now, there's two UI uh, platforms for writing and creating uh, WinRT applications or Windows 8 Store applications. Uh, the first one, obviously, is my favorite, is XAML and C Sharp. Of course, you can do VB.NET, C, C++, but I am a XAML C Sharp guy. Uh, so everything I'm going to show you is going to be in XAML and C Sharp. Then you have the other side of the fence, which is HTML and JavaScript. Now, you might have heard the term WinJS, right? Uh, and then some people even kind of use the terminology as WinRT to uh, signify XAML and WinJS to signify uh, HTML JavaScript. Well, technically, WinJS is WinRT. We have this term that's called a projection. Okay, and basically, WinJS it's a projection that allows you to write uh, WinRT uh, code, right, Windows 8 apps, uh, using HTML and JavaScript. So technically, they're the same thing. WinJS is WinRT. It's just a projection that allows you to access those APIs through HTML and JavaScript. So I'm going to be using the term XAML and HTML 
to, to signify the differences. I'm not going to be saying WinRT and WinJS. It's going to be XAML and HTML. No matter what your flavor, XAML or HTML, we have controls for you. Me personally, like I said, I'm a XAML guy. If you know me, if you heard me speak, I'm definitely hardcore XAML. Uh, but you can choose your path to Windows 8 with uh, NetAdvantage Windows UI, no matter what UI platform uh, you care about. Now, as you can see, we have a lot of controls to talk about today. So let's just start digging right into it. So first I want to talk about NetAdvantage for Windows UI are XAML controls. So these are based off our NetAdvantage for Silverlight and WPF controls. So what's that mean? That means if you already use our Silverlight and WPF controls to write uh, Silverlight and WPF applications, then you're already familiar with our controls. You're already familiar with the API. Uh, we have feature parity as close as possible uh, where we don't have the platform differences. So if you're writing apps in WPF with our NetAdvantage for WPF, and you're using one of our, our say, our grid control or uh, an editor, and you come over to uh, Windows 8, you can expect the same features to be there. So you don't have to learn anything new. It's going to be the same API and same feature set. This also exposes you to uh, a better possibility of code reuse. A lot of the demos write, is, especially if you see me doing a lot of pr Prism talking, I talk a lot about on Prism and how I share code across platforms. Well, now you have the opportunity to share your code uh, across platforms as well, not just WPF and Silverlight, but also on the uh, Windows 8 side. And even though these controls are based off our WPF and Silverlight controls, they are optimized for touch. So you're going to have that fast and fluid uh, experience when you're, when you're using the controls on the end user side. So the first control we're going to cover today is our data chart. So the XAM data chart control can, it can display tens of thousands of data points and uh, update itself every few milliseconds so that it can handle your real-time uh, data feeds. So it, it has a modular design. Uh, basically, the control is a chart control design with the mod modularity of legend and axes and uh, series taken into account. So you can have multiple axes and legends and chart series in the same chart plot area. So that, that's really cool. Uh, we have the ability to uh, set up chart series types such as area, line, spline, uh, column chart series. We support financial chart series. This includes uh, scenarios with support for both uh, candlestick, uh, o OHLC bar charts, uh, technical indicators like moving averages, uh, MACDs, Wilders, RSI, and many, many more. There are so many features that this data chart has. There's no possible way I can get through it all in just a few minutes. This needs a whole uh, webinar on itself. The next control is our barcode. Now, from shipping containers to medical records uh, to a, a can of beans at the grocery store, uh, barcodes have really become the universal mechanism for affixing, uh, identifying data to physical assets. And we support over 10 different uh, symbologies for barcodes. We got the code 39, code 128, uh, intelligent Mail, Royal Mail, PDF 417, QR code, you get the idea. So no matter what barcode you need, we can cover all your barcode needs. Now, a calendar control is a must-have for any line of business application. Uh, the ability to display days of the month, uh, day headings for the days of the week, title with the month, name, and year, uh, links for selecting individual days of the month, and links for uh, moving from the next and previous month and year, it, it's a must-have. So, but luckily for you, we got one of those too. The Zam calendar is not just a simple, you know, just a simple calendar, but it's it's a feature-rich calendar that allows you to display multiple calendars in rows and columns. Okay, it supports different views for day, month, year, decade, uh, and even century views, and it also supports single date selection as well as multiple date selection. And of course there's APIs to allow you to control what dates are enabled or disabled and uh, mark holidays and all that great stuff. And Rut Control Suite would not be complete without editors. You have to have editors. We know you need editors and editors you shall have, uh, four to be exact. So in this first release of NetAdvantage for Windows UI, our XAML controls ship with the uh, XAM date time input a masked input, a numeric input, and the currency input. Now, the date time input, not only can you select a date from the built-in uh, drop-down calendar, 
but you can also restrict uh, direct user input to a specific mask. Okay, uh, Most of our controls are built on top of our mask input, so all of our editor controls are going to have great masking capabilities to help restrict input. Now, uh, if you're using numerical data, uh, that's numerical data values, you need to be using the XAM a numeric input. It allows you to restrict input and formatting to valid numeric formats. Uh, if you deal with money, you're looking at the XAM currency input. This is going to use a mask to prepend a value with a given culture's uh, currency symbol. So if you're in Japan, you're using uh, yen. If you're in the U.S., you're using the dollar sign. And uh, you can even ensure the fraction portion of the value remains intact up to the hundredths place, even if there's not a remainder. Uh, so that's, that's very handy, and uh, you, you need that kind of accuracy when you're dealing with currency. Now, there's a couple more controls that we're getting there in CTP. Okay, so basically CTP means uh, we got really close to finishing these for you, but we just couldn't call it good, you know, you know, perfect. We couldn't call it perfect, so we weren't comfortable releasing it, uh, RTM. So we have a couple of controls out that I want to get into your hands early so I can start getting your feedback. Uh, obviously, one of the most popular controls for line of business applications is a data grid. Well, if you need one, we got one. Uh, even though it's currently being released as a CTP, uh, don't let the CTP label fool you. Uh, the XAM grid is a very feature-rich uh, grid that allows you to display and edit complex hierarchical data with master detail relationships. And uh, you can have different column layouts at each level. Now, pay attention to what I just said. I said hierarchical data. I'm not talking about just grouping. Uh, a lot of the current grids on the market now, they only support grouping of data. We have actual true data hierarchy to the end level. So you can go great, great, great grandparent down to the great grandparent, parent, child, all that great stuff. You're not, you're not limited to the number of levels in which you can drill into a, a hierarchy relationship. It utilizes uh, UI virtualization which makes the grid extremely lightweight and extremely fast when handling uh, large amounts of data. Uh, and with the powerful features such as uh, column sorting, you filtering, column moving, column grouping, which is different than grouping of data, which we also support. We have fixed columns. I mean, this grid, even as CTP, is the most feature-rich grid on the market for Windows 8 right now. Now, another control, well, actually, it's a framework. Uh, another component we're getting is the Excel framework. Now, it's no secret that Excel runs most companies today. Uh, with the Excel framework, getting Excel data in and out of your Windows 8 application has never been easier. So you can use our Excel framework to basically uh, create spreadsheets uh, using Microsoft Excel spreadsheet objects like uh, workbooks, uh, worksheets, cells, formulas, uh, things like that. So it's going to be very familiar to you if you've done any type of Excel work. And one of the unique features of our Excel framework is that it's just a class library, and it runs completely independent of Microsoft Excel. So what this means is you're not required to have Excel uh, installed on the machine in order to use it. You don't have to have those uh, interop assemblies installed on any of the machines. You just use our library, use our framework, and you're already dealing in creating Excel uh, documents, which is really cool. And last but not least, we have our persistence framework. Now, if you use our controls uh, currently, you might be familiar with this. Basically, our uh, persistence framework allows you to uh, save, the, save and load the current state of a control. So you define what dependency object gets persisted and what properties of that object can be saved and loaded. Uh, this is going to become very, very useful, especially in Windows 8 applications when you start thinking about uh, you know, your, your resume and your suspend states of the life cycle of your Windows 8 application. So when someone goes away from your app, you're going to suspend your application. It's going to be in suspended state. Well, using our persistence framework, you can start persisting uh, the states of your objects, the states of your controls on your view, and then when they come back and your application resumes uh, function, then you can reload that state and you won't lose anything. So right now I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a quick demo of our XAML controls. And I'm actually going to, because this, I'm on a Windows 8 machine and the GoToWebinar will not record my start screen if I were to switch to it, 
I'm actually going to load this up in uh, the simulator that ships with Visual Studio. So when you install NetAdvantage for Windows UI, you're actually going to get a couple of things installed. You're going to get uh, the sample code to our sample browsers for both the uh, HTML and the XAML uh, controls. So I'm going to launch the XAML controls right here. Now, when, you, when this first loads, you're going to notice a, a big featured control area. Uh, basically, this is where we're going to highlight some of the, 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 the features that we think that are really cool that we want you to take a look at. We'll have some other features kind of scrolling in and out uh, on the right-hand side here. And kind of, you know, just, just throwing some random features out there that you may want to check out. Uh, we have buttons here for you to contact us on Facebook, uh, connect with us on Twitter. You can check out our RSS feed. And this button right here, this mail icon, pay special attention to this. This icon here will email me directly. Okay, I want your feedback. I want to know what you think about our controls. I want to know your feature requests. I want to hear your complaints. I want to hear the good things you have to say. Uh, so this is going to email me directly. So you can just call this the email Brian button if you want because that's what it's going to do. You're going to have direct, direct access to me, which means your feedback is going to have a direct impact on the product. So your emails aren't going to be lost in some black hole of some support system. It's coming direct to me. Okay, so let's take a quick overview of this application. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to scroll over to the right. You can kind of see how we started creating groupings. Uh, you know, some of these currently only have one control under them, but that's because we just haven't got the other controls in. For example, we're going to have a pivot grid coming, right? So it's going to go under grids. We're going to have more chart types coming. It's going to be under charts, more frameworks, editors. Okay, so if you scroll through here, you can see a number of uh, control examples we have. We also support semantic zoom. So if you were to uh, click this button here, I'm using a mouse, so I'm using a click. Otherwise, I'd use the pinch gesture. You can see how we support the semantic zoom as well. If I want to go into the editors, we see we have five editor examples. So let's go actually dig into uh, an example. We'll go to the grid first because grids are really cool. Once you dig into a control example, you're going to see individual samples of uh, you know, certain features, uh, particular features about that control. And once again, we have uh, groups at the top. This, uh, we have examples dealing with data, uh, with display, editing and selection, uh, organization. Some have styling. Uh, and this is just going to grow as the product matures. So let's take a look at the hierarchical data. So I'm going to click on the button here. It's going to take us to the sample. Now, as you can see, hierarchical data is different than grouping, grouping of data. So here we have an actual, uh, we have a record that has child records. It has a different uh, column layout than its parent record does. And of course, the grid supports paging, so we can page through uh, the different record pages. And once I come back, my state is saved of the expanded record. Now, one thing I want to point out is we have these great samples. We also provide you the source code to check out how this is kind of put together. So if you were to right click or if you are using a touch gesture, so I'm going to move to a touch and do the down swipe from the top. You can see this button here called Code View. Click the Code View and you'll see that we provide you with the uh, XAML the C sharp and what we what we refer to as the snippet. Now the snippet is basically a, a block of code that has been identified by the begin snippet uh, comment that allows us to pull that out and just show you what you care about. This is the control. This is the grid. Uh, you might not want to see all the noise of the namespaces and everything else. Now do notice that you can copy and paste out from our sample browser. Okay, that's a, that's a big deal. That's awesome. A lot of sample browsers don't let you do that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go back. Now, as you navigate the sample browser, you're also going to notice these buttons on the right and left side here. These are going to take you to the next sample in that sample group. Okay, so we can just kind of scroll through here to see the different 
types of bindings and data examples. So now I'm going to come back. So you saw how we have hierarchical data. Well, because we have that persistence framework, we can also export our data to an Excel spreadsheet. Just let this data load because we're actually pulling this from a service. So I can export this data. I can say, hey, don't exclude. We can exclude the name. We can exclude the unit price. So basically, uh, current page, all the pages, we can control what information we export uh, to our Excel document. So I'm just going to override one here. There we go. We saved the, the, ex, the Excel document uh, as, as expected. Not only that, but you, we have events that you can hook into. So we start exporting. You'll see the event log that occurs. A uh, very powerful uh, feature for, the, for exporting uh, to Excel or importing into Excel. Now let me show you grouped columns. Now grouped columns, like I said, is not data grouping. Okay, uh, Grouping of data is different than grouped columns. As you can see here, here we're grouping columns to where we can create these overall uh, containing column header information, like patient information. And under there, we can start pulling and dragging around our, uh, let me enable this. We can start pulling and changing and grouping our columns however we see fit. So we can start moving these things around, grouping our columns to uh, you know, display this information to our users. And we still get the sorting. We still get all that great stuff. We even have a row, uh, column pinning. So we can pin your, the columns to the left, right? Something else that no other vendor has right now. Now, let's compare that to what grouping is, data grouping, group by. So now when you're grouping data, this is where you're dragging your column header up and you're grouping by that column, right? So now I can see I have six account managers or, you know, one sales assistant and uh, some sales representatives and marketing assistants. And now we can start drilling down into these groups, right? Oh, look there. I can go nested groups. So we're not limited to just one level of grouping. We can continue to group and just keep going down and just keep drilling down. And we can have... Uh, data hierarchy on top of this. So not only can we continue to group our data, but we can start drilling into any child relationships that a particular record may have. Now, one more thing I want to show you for the grid before moving on is editing. Remember when I was talking about the grid, not only are we displaying data, but we're editing data. And because this is a touch space environment, we use the term tap, so we can enable editing by a double tap. Since I'm using a mouse, it's a double click. Or we can change it to a single tap, meaning the second I tap into it. Or we can just disable editing altogether to where I can't come fix my name. Of course, we have tons of other features for the grid, and that's just the grid by itself. I don't want to spend too much more time here. Uh, let's kind of run through the data chart. You can see all the different types of uh, samples we have for our uh, data chart. We'll go ahead and we'll just kind of skim through them. I don't want to spend too much more time here. We've got to move on to the HTML. As you see with each sample that we have, we provide you with the values to allow you to start manipulating uh, the different elements of the sample. So these, these samples aren't just static. Okay, They're very interactive and allow you to uh, kind, of, kind of really play with all the different features of the controls. Let's go ahead and look at different, some of the different chart series we have. As you can see, we have tons and tons of chart series. So I'm just going to scroll through a couple of them, and then we'll go to the Q&A and uh, then move on to the HTML side. Here we have a high density scattered series. This is basically taking millions of data points and uh, sticking them onto the data chart. And I mean, the, the performance here would just blow your mind. Of course, you have your zoom in, 
and each single uh, scatter item data value has its own tooltip. Custom series, uh, bubble series, we have our category series, but on top of that you also have points, right, your, your different types of these category series, bar series, stacked bar series, category series part two. Some of these uh, names can be a little more descriptive and we're going to uh, be working on that uh, in the next release of the uh, sample browser. Okay, great. So I'm running out a little bit of time, so I'm going to go ahead and exit our sample browser. I do want to mention that you can also go to the Windows Store and download both the XAML and HTML versions of our sample browser. Okay, so right now let's go ahead and move to a quick q and I'm going to spend about three minutes on Q&A for XAML. Okay, so we got some sound. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, so how does a CTP grid dif different from the data grid in WPF 12.1? Uh, okay, so the grid for our Windows 8 uh, XAML controls is based off the XAM grid. Okay, so if you're in WPF, we have two different grids in WPF. We have the XAM data grid, which are, is our WPF specific grid, and then we have the XAM grid, which is our cross-platform uh, grid, which works across both uh, Silverlight and WPF. The version you see here is the XAM grid. This is the cross-platform grid. So it's going to have more feature parity with the XAM grid that you see in WPF. Uh, the rich text editor was spoken of yesterday. Is not is that not available in 13.1? Uh, yesterday, the rich text editor, we had a, a webinar on what's new for 13.1 for WPF and Silverlight. Uh, the rich text editor CTP will be available hopefully by next week. Uh, and then the rich text editor will be RTMing in uh, the next release of 13.2. Okay, on the hierarchical grid, can you have two children, uh, two child tables of different structures hanging off a parent single record? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think. You mean you have, we have a, let's say we have uh, an employee who has a collection of uh, companies and a collection of tasks. Uh, yes. So it doesn't matter if it has two collections underneath it. Uh, that's fine. It'll show two different hierarchies drilling into those two different collections. No problem. Uh, which website are these demos from? Okay, this is not a website. We're on Windows 8. Like I said, you can go to the Windows Store and just search for uh, Infragistics and you'll see both the XAML and the HTML sample browsers for our Windows 8 controls. Are these controls uh, usable in ASP.NET? Uh, so no, XAML controls are not usable in ASP.NET. If you want to use uh, controls like this, which we're about to talk about in, uh, in the next section here, uh, our Ignite UI controls are what you're going to want to be using for your ASP.NET website. So those are our uh, HTML and jQuery based controls. Okay, let's see. Are the sample browsers included as part of the ultimate collection? Yes, if you have the ultimate collection, you have this product already. You already have Windows uh, NetAdvantage for Windows UI. You can go ahead, uh, download the sample browsers. We have the source code and everything. Uh, that's what I was running off of. I was running off the source code inside the simulator. So yes, you do have those. Okay, under an invoice transaction parent record, I have two related child tables, a line item detail table listing the details. Yeah, so... Any type of hierarchy under a parent record is supported. It's, it's true hierarchy. So if you have, it doesn't matter how far down or how many different uh, child collections you have under a parent, uh, the hierarchy will work as expected. Very sharp looking controls. Thanks. Okay, that kind of looks like, uh, oh wait, here we go. Do you support 2D data metrics barcodes? Uh, right now, uh, I do not believe we do. We only support those uh, 10 symbologies. Uh, 
you know, but each of those have their own settings. So you just go through the sample browser, look for the symbology you care about, like the PDF or the uh, the QR code, and play with the settings. We may actually support that. Uh, I'm not, I can't answer that right now, but I can get back to you on that. Okay, so the other ones can wait till the end. So let's go ahead and get moving on to uh, our next section, which is basically going to be covering our awesome HTML version of uh, NetAdvantage for Windows UI. So let's say you're not a XAML guy. <clears throat> I won't judge you. You're an HTML guy. You prefer divs and CSS and JavaScript. That, that's your world. Well, you know what, and, and, and you want to write Windows applications, no problem, we have you covered. NetAdvantage for Windows UI ships with a complete feature set rich uh, HTML suite. Now these controls are based on our Ignite UI jQuery controls. So if you already use uh, our Ignite UI product, then you can already write Windows 8 applications. Uh, our Ignite UI controls, they're built on top of jQuery UI. So if you know HTML and you know jQuery, you know Ignite UI. And if you know Ignite UI, you know how to write Windows 8 apps using NetAdvantage for Windows UI. Uh, once again, if you're coming from that space, uh, it's a familiar API. We're going to have feature parity across both HTML5, jQuery, and a NetAdvantage for Windows UI. And these controls are also optimized for touch. Okay, So we want you to have that, that smooth experience, a fast and fluid that... Uh, that touch-based experience that your users are going to expect from the apps you write. Now, once again, HTML, it has a grid. It has the most powerful grid out there, and that's because our Ignite UI grid is the most feature-rich and powerful grid out there. But it has a ton of features. I can't even go into all of them. I'm just going to highlight a couple of them. Right? So with uh, our HTML grid, uh, users can customize and combine data for their applications, uh, just by uh, dragging and dropping the column header uh, to the group, uh, the group by area, and common values and conditions. So you can group and ungroup. Right, we kind of talked about that on the XAML side. Uh, once again, we support uh, full editing, so you can enter data within the cell. You can use templates with custom editors that match the column's data type. Uh, so that it allows for uh, for adding new rows and deleting rows within the grid. Has a great touch experience based uh, on that. And in addition to that, uh, validations can be done real time within the grid cell, which is really cool. Uh, we also support uh, column summaries, which is basically showing uh, aggregates of values in the cell. Uh, out of the box, we ship with uh, standard uh, sum, average, uh, max, min, and count aggregate formulas. Okay, so those are built right in. Uh, you can merge cells. Uh, this is a feature that basically allows for sorted cells, which have the same values, to be merged into a single visual cell. Okay, so this isn't like merging cells like in, in Excel. This is uh, taking uh, values that are the same, right? We have the same value, and we're merging them into a single cell, which makes for an easier and more uh, context-oriented uh, visualization of your data. And, of course, uh, unbound columns this is another very popular and uh, you know, much needed feature. Basically, you can add fields to your grids that aren't uh, bound to a data source, and uh, maybe you're displaying custom data in addition to what's already available in the data source. Uh, and, and you know, we just have tons, tons of uh, features for our XAML grid, or excuse me, for the HTML grid. See, I'm such a XAML guy; I just always have XAML on the brain. Next, we have our hierarchical grid. Uh, can you guess what what this does? Yeah. It shows hierarchy, okay? So the hierarchical grid, it, it builds on the HTML grid control we just looked at, but it shows uh, multiple parent-child relationships and the uh, expandable high hurl data grid. It, basically, this is going to be the backbone of your data-centric Windows Store applications. Uh, users are going to be able to drill down as well as, as well as add, edit, delete, select, sort, group, uh, filter, uh, using either their mouse, a keyboard, or touch. Remember, this is going to be – Windows 8 is a very touch-centric environment, and so all, all the controls we have are uh, very optimized for touch. And just like the XAM grid, this uh, HTML hierarchical grid, uh, you don't need to stop at one level of parent-child relationship. The uh, hierarchical grid lets you have as many as you want, 
related by a, a key from one level to the next. You can uh, combine and customize data uh, by grouping and ungrouping, just like you could with the grid. And once again, we have the column summaries uh, showing the aggregate values, the sum, the average, the max, right? Because this builds, builds on top of the HTML grid uh, that we just looked at. Once again, we, we had to bring over uh, one of our strongest and most popular controls is our data chart. Uh, basically, the HTML data chart uh, supports over 50 chart types. I mean, this is it's ridiculous. We have the most feature-rich data chart on the market. Uh, the HTML data chart control offers a full set of dynamic business charts right out of the box, right? We're talking a bar, line, polar, range, step, spline, OHLC, candlestick, uh, as well as technical and financial indicators. You know, we have full support for panning and zooming, uh, chart data using uh, a mouse and keyboard, of course, touch. Uh, you can compare from two different data sources, right? So we support multiple series. This makes it really easy to bind the chart to more than one series. So you can have, uh, you know, a bar series. You can have uh, different types of series all in one chart. Of course, we have uh, a legend that can be applied to help with understanding the data being presented, and we support multiple legends. Uh, we have trend lines built into the charts. Uh, basically, a, a trend line shows the visual projections of data based on the trend formula selected. So it makes it easy for the reader to get a snapshot of any type of trending data uh, within the data set. And of course, one of our, our, our key com components to any of our controls is performance. Uh, we have a very high performance rendering. Our charts can display millions of data points and, and update with uh, high frequency to handle real-time data feeds. And there's not, uh, I can't think of another chart on the market right now that can do that. Now this is one control that just missed the XAML side. We just we couldn't get it in for the XAML, but we made it into the HTML side. So uh, the map control. Our HTML map control uh, is basically used to plot map data from different map providers. And we support OpenStreetMap, Bing Maps, and CloudMade right now. Uh, but we also expose the ability to render additional map layers. All right, so you can create uh, highly detailed thematic geographical maps uh, using features that uh, include like uh, custom shape templates, uh, the ability to render polyline and poly shapes, uh, map progressions, scatter area plots. Uh, we provide an uh, an overview pane and, and much more. All right, so with a scatter series, uh, you can show thousands of data points on a map, such as uh, precipitation uh, measurements from weather stations from around the the world or uh, the contour line maps can be used to show thousands of data points by joining points of equal value, such as elevations or precipitation levels, things like that. Now, the shape series can be used to visualize uh, enclosed areas on a map, like countries or regions. So you kind of block things out using a shape series. Uh, some, ge uh, some geographic series require a triangulation of data in order to render, and this process can be very time-consuming especially when massive amounts of data points are involved. So we have a new tri uh, triangulation feature, which basically enables your application to avoid this computation at runtime altogether. And what it does is it, uh, it pre-triangulates the data and provides the triangulation to the GeoMap series. So basically, to, to put it simply, this map has it all. This map can, can do it all, and uh, it performs better than the... Uh, apps, the maps that maybe Bing would provide you, you know, directly out of the box from, from, from Microsoft. Another control of interest would be the pie chart. Now, the pie chart allows you to create uh, either simple or exploded pie charts. Uh, they have text labels and images that can be displayed within or outside of the pie uh, in, in, in a manner that, like, avoids overlapping because you don't want your labels uh, overlapping. You can allow your users to click uh, or drill down to view underlying data, explode out a section of the pie and get information via tool tips, right? So there's a number of features that this pie chart has. Uh, for example, the pie radius feature allows controlling the size of the pie, uh, pie labels, 
is basically responsible for displaying and controlling labels designating each slice, right? So the labels of the different pieces of the pie chart can be configured to display in different places, right? So relative to the corresponding slice, remember this overlapping we're talking about, but you can control where those uh, labels go. You can control the start angle, which is the position of the first slice of the chart, uh, the sweep direction, which is the direction in which uh, consecutive slices are plotted on the chart. You can explode slices and uh, distance, so you can control uh, how some slices can be exploded out. Basically, uh, exploding means being drawn detached from the other slices. And you can also control the distance in which they uh, can be detached, right? How far away can they be exploded or detached from the overall uh, pie? Now, once again, editors, you got to have editors. And the HTML, uh, the NetAdvantage for Windows UI HTML controls a ship with a ton of editors. So, first off, the date editor. Uh, it easily constrains a date input as well as its display. And you can configure minimum and maximum dates accepted as well as provide a, a default date for like a null value. And you're not just restricted to a date with this control. Uh, you know, time supported as well. Now, you're going to see right under that, you're going to see another control called the date picker. Okay, so yeah, this one's different. We have two separate controls. Uh, the date picker extends the features of the date editor control, but it adds the calendar dropdown. And this calendar dropdown is actually the already well-known jQuery UI date picker. Okay, so we're, we're, we're leveraging the code that's already been written. We're taking advantage of that. So this gives you complete control over the calendar. Uh, you can easily turn features on and off, uh, all with a familiar API. Of course, we have the uh, numeric editor. Uh, provides editing capabilities for numeric input, very similar to uh, the XAML side. If you want to edit doubles, floats, uh, integers, bytes, uh, you know, th this numeric editor handles them all. You can provide your own decimal and group separators. So group separating mean, you know, in the U.S., we use three digits, comma, three digits, comma. Well, you can say, you know what, I want five digits, semicolon, right? So you can control all that, uh, come up with your own uh, custom groups, uh, whatever fits your needs. You can even, uh, you said, yeah, you can control the length of the group. And for really large numbers, we even support scientific format. So in some apps, that is a must-have. And with a single property, you can turn on and off spin buttons to give you the capability to increment and decrement any numeric values within the editor. Uh, next you have the currency editor, which basically expands all the great functionality that the numeric editor gives you, but gives you advanced features for dealing with currency. Right, so uh, the currency editor only accepts numeric digits uh, that can be formatted as various currency types. Right, We were talking about the Japanese yen, right, the US dollar. Uh, you can easily control formatting options such as the uh, decimal separator, the currency symbol, the positive and negative patterns, right? So if you have a negative number, you can control what that looks like. Maybe you make it red with the parentheses and, and a negative or, or however you want to control that, as well as the group length and the separator uh, with the numeric editor uh, that you had. We also have the mask editor control. Now this control gives you complete control over the format and the constraints of the input text uh, using uh, mask rules, right? So you can easily restrict user input to a format of, of your choice. Whatever you want to restrict, you can do. If you want uh, only a phone number, if you want a social security number, uh, you know, if you want, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you want. You can restrict it to a, um, to a mask, right? And you can read that data as raw text with the prompts and the literals or just the raw text. It doesn't matter. And you can customize your prompt uh, they use the word prompt. I've also heard the term watermark, right? So if you have no value in there, you can provide a watermark to kind of help guide the user on, on what type of data they're going to be entering. Uh, you can customize your pad characters, and it also has autocomplete functionality, okay, which is pretty cool for a masked editor. And last but not least, we have our text editor. Now, uh, the text editor is, is better than just a normal text box, right? Our text editor supports autocomplete to help speed up the text input process. 
uh, based on values that you provide the control. So you're going to provide this control with a, a list of values that's going to be used as the autocomplete or the lookup, right? You can also le easily um, add spinners, right? The, the spinner up or down buttons or drop down button capabilities with just a single property. Uh, the editor can be formatted to support a single input or multi-line input. And once again, you can provide a null text to be shown when the editor has no value. So that's that watermark we, I was just talking about. Uh, obviously, you can strict the uh, text input to a, to a maximum length. And also has built-in uh, features to help restrict a specific character input. You know, maybe you want to control the case of the text. You want to automatically go to upper uh, or to lower. All right, so let's go ahead and take a uh, gander at our HTML sample browser. So once again, when you install NetAdvantage for Windows UI, the, you're going to get source code for, do, for both the XAML and the HTML. Now we're going to run the HTML version of the sample browser. At first glance, this is going to look exactly like the XAML browser, and that's because it is. We wanted to make the experience as close as possible. You know, you have your features controls over here. You have the Facebook. You have the Twitter. You have the RSS feed. And remember this button, this is the email Brian button, okay? So you still have the email Brian button that you can reach out to me anytime. We'll scroll through here. You can see the, uh, the number of controls we have, the different examples we have. Once again, you can drill down into a specific example. So we want to check out the data chart. We can scroll through here. We can see the different uh, categories for display and performance, binding one million data points. Uh, now, I do want to point out what, what we call the motion framework. Now, this is really cool. Okay, No one else has this. Infragistics is the only company that provides this. Now, what the motion framework does, I'm going to go ahead and play this animation. But what the motion framework does is it's going to take the old uh, data values that the chart has, and you're going to provide the data chart with you know, new values. You're going to get new values. So what's going to happen is this motion framework is going to take the old values, look at the new values, and it's going to calculate a transition or an animation between those. Right? So the experience to the end user is a nice fluid uh, type experience. You know, It's not going to be like right now on, on every other chart type, when you switch out your data points or your data values, you're going to get this herky-jerky, very jarring experience because your, your map's just going to like change to be really rough and abrasive. Uh, well, with the motion framework, you can ease that transition from data points. It makes it a much better end-user uh, experience. And it's, it's just that what we call the fit and polish, right? It's just those little things that really improve the experience with a control. So I'm going to go ahead and go back. I'm going to check out our... Uh, bar columns and charts. We'll take a quick different look at some of the uh, chart types we have on the HTML side. You can see we have category line, area, spline, waterfall. I'm getting a little short on time so I'm going to rush a little bit because I want to leave time for questions. Uh, financial series, this is a candlestick. We have our money flow indicator. Going over to our polar series, our polar line, scatter, area, you get the idea. We have tons and tons of charts. It just, it just keeps going and going and going. So let's go ahead and get out of the data chart. We'll take a quick look at the pie chart really quickly. We have this, this particular example. Uh, just kind of gives you uh, different ways to set the pie chart. This we're setting the, the angle at 120 degrees. Here we're setting the pie radius and putting the labels to the outside. Uh, we're going to be improving the sample to give you the, the options that you have on the, on the XAML browser. You remember you had all the options on the left-hand side to manipulate the control. We're going to be updating this, uh, the sample to do that. And of course, styling, uh, because it is HTML, in JavaScript and CSS. So you can style either by control options or by CSS. My guess is you're an HTML guy, you're going to be using CSS. Okay, so let's hop out of the pie chart. Let's go take a quick look at some of our grids. Once again, we have our normal grid. We can show off some row templates. We have Getting a little short on time, so I'm just going to run over to all features enabled. 
So this particular example shows how our grid works when all the features are enabled. Uh, you know, the filtering, the sorting, paging, uh, selection. So if I move over to the touch here, remember when I said you can delete the rows in line with touch? If I hover over a row using the simulator, you see this little button here, this delete button? I can click that and now that item has been marked as deletion, right? You can do filtering. You can come in here and start adding new rows. You can uh, show summaries. You can hide the summaries. You have your column chooser. You can sort on multiples. You can group. Come over here and start grouping. So as you can see, this is a very, very feature-rich, performant grid. Uh, basically, basically, this is the best Windows 8 HTML grid out there. And that's because it's, it's based off our Ignite UI uh, product. So let's just jump over one more time. I just want to check out the hierarchical grid, and then we'll go into our Q&A. So the hierarchical grid, basically, it's the same as the HTML grid we just looked at, but it, it provides support for hierarchy. Okay, of course, we have paging. All that great stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up for questions. Let's see what we got here. Uh, will there be another talk soon for programmers of ASP.NET and C Sharp? Uh, Deborah, why don't you send me an email and maybe we can create something. I'm, I'm not familiar with any. We have uh, webinars all the time, many, many a month. Uh, so uh, go ahead and shoot me an email, and uh, we'll, we'll see if maybe we can just create one for you. It might be something that more than one person is interested in. Uh, would we be having other webinars in May, too? Yes, we're going to have webinars. We have webinars every month. Are the products for ASP.NET and C Sharp the Ignite UI controls? So our Ignite UI controls, they are HTML and jQuery, so JavaScript, jQuery, HTML. So you can use those in any web application. Okay, so ASP.NET, ASP.NBC, uh, SharePoint. Uh, it could be a PHP website, a WordPress, Light Switch. It doesn't matter if, it, if it's HTML. You can use our Ignite UI controls in it. How many slices can we show on one pie chart? How many do you want to put on it? Uh, some things you'll have to you'll have to keep in mind is readability, right? The the more slices you have, the bigger radius you're probably going to want. You don't want to clutter things too much, uh, but you're not limited to the number of slices. You can just uh, go ahead and make the the most complicated number of slices you can think of. I uh, had a comment here. Wow, that was even smooth on shared desktop. Improve impressive. Uh, yeah, thanks for the comment. Yeah, keep in mind, all the demos you've seen here, we're going uh, through a shared do desktop over the web. A lot of you are in different countries with different pipes. And, and the performance you see on your side, imagine that on your device at your fingertips. It's going to blow your mind. A motion framework is available for both XAML and HTML controls. Uh, so for the XAML side of Ignite, uh, excuse me, for the XAML side of Windows UI, uh, the motion framework hasn't quite made it over yet, but it's coming. Uh, so right now it's on the HTML side. Uh, I'm hoping to have the motion framework on the XAML side. Uh, I'm really hoping for 13.2, but I can't promise that. Uh, but it is already available for WPF and Silverlight. Okay, am I going to build? Uh, there is a very strong possibility I will be at build. I should know probably by the end of next week. Okay, do we add 30 slices on one pie chart? You can add as many slices as you want. Just keep in mind, uh, you'll want to put your labels on the outside, right, because you're not going to be able to put labels on the inside of your pie chart, uh, or you won't be able to read them. And make sure you have a diameter big enough uh, to where it, it doesn't clutter your UI too much. Can the HTML version operate as a disconnected app so it will work in cases when an Internet connection goes down? Database can be updated, synchronized. Okay, so... The answer is yes. Uh, our controls aren't dependent on any network except 
for the map if you're using a service, a map service. Okay, so if you're using a Bing or something like that, you're going to have to have network access. But all the other HTML controls, it's just HTML and client-side JavaScript, okay, so jQuery. So if, if your app doesn't require network access, then our controls will run just fine in a disconnected state. Okay, so where do you get NetAdvantage for Windows UI today? Well, right now you can go to infrajustice.com slash products slash windows dash UI downloads. You can get a 30-day trial. You'll get both the uh, XAML and HTML controls with sample code uh, for all the for both sample browsers. Or you can go ahead, if you're on Windows 8 machine right now, you can go uh, to the store, the Windows store, and just type in, well, in a web browser on the Windows 8, you'd want to type in your uh, bit.ly winui-xaml or winui-html, and that will open up the, uh, the Windows Store samples on your Windows 8 machine, okay, to where you can install them directly. Uh, here's my contact information. If someone's asking for my email, uh, you can email me at blagunas at infragistus.com. Uh, also, keep in mind, those sample browsers, they have the email Brian button. Right? Don't forget that. that that's going to be very useful. Uh, that's your direct access to me, right? And I'm the product manager of this product, so your feedback straight to me, nobody else, is going to have a direct impact on the direction of this product. Okay? So if you have feature requests or anything like that. Okay, uh, right here, new, a NuGet question. Uh, can you answer at the end of the presentation, when working in 2012, is there a NuGet package to set up your app with all the pieces needed to support NetAdvantage? Okay, so we are coming out with uh, NuGet packages for, for, uh, for the control uh, suites that make sense. For example, uh, I believe we're coming out with an Ignite UI uh, NuGet package here pretty soon. Uh, we're investigating how to get other uh, control packages into NuGet. Uh, you know, we have to worry about licensing and, and things like that. But once we we figure those out, uh, we're, we're definitely working on getting uh, a NuGet package available because we know how uh, productive that can be and how easy that is. So we ha I had a question: In which region domain do you think this is helpful? Uh, I don't know if I really understand that question. I don't know if you are talking about uh, Windows 8 apps in general. Uh, you know, the big the big push for Microsoft right now is consumer based apps. Consumer-based apps are definitely going to be the applications that you upload to the store. Uh, they're going to run on ARM devices, basically the Surface RT, those type of devices, which are not an Intel-based uh, device. It, it runs on an ARM processor. But you can also write internal line of business applications that don't belong in the store. They don't have to be in the store. You can do what's called side-loading. So if you write a custom app for your business, for your company, you can actually side-load, basically meaning load your application on a company device without going through the store. That's basically what sideloading is. So maybe you want to write a dashboard apps or uh, some type of companion app for some type of uh, internal application you have where your CEO is, you know, he's going out to the field or he's on the plane and he wants to, you know, visualize uh, some type of tracking information or inventory system or whatever the case may be. You can uh, easily create that, build that with uh, NetAdvantage for Windows UI, Siloaded onto his device, his Windows 8 device, and uh, he can hit the ground running. Uh, great presentation. Thanks a lot. All right. Well, uh, I don't have any more questions coming in. I will hang around for about uh, five more minutes waiting for any straggler questions. Uh, like I said, feel free to contact me at Twitter. I blog at Brian Lagunas, and my email is right up on the screen. Uh, so... The webinar is over. If you have any questions, I'm going to hang around for about